my first ever Rolex was a day date. I remember thinking, wow, to have a Rolex in my day and today is something special. Rolex is one of the most well-known watch manufacturers and has been producing watches since 1905. Whether you own one or you're eyeing one to add to your collection, how much do you know about the brand? Originally founded in 1905 in London by a 24-year-old Hans Wilsdorf and brother-in-law Alfred Davis, Rolex was first known as Wilsdorf and Davis. They originally imported movements, housed them in British cases, and sold them to jewelers. Through this, the pair saw the potential for developing their own brand. In 1908 this was realized when Wilsdorf secured the name Rolex. The name Rolex didn't come from the usual last name of the watchmakers but instead, Wilsdorf said the name came to him while riding a horse-drawn bus when a genie whispered Rolex in his ear. Wilsdorf wanted a short name that would be easy to remember and say in any languages. While the brand started in London, after trademarking, Rolex the company quickly opened an office in La Chaux de Fonds, Switzerland. Wilsdorf always saw an appeal for precision in timekeeping and in 1910 a Rolex became the first wristwatch to carry the Swiss certificate of chronometric precision. In 1919, the brand moved from England to Geneva. In 1920, the name officially changed to Monter's Rolex SA and later to Rolex SA. The history of Rolex is tied to the history of watchmaking in the 1900s. Rolex boasts of having over 500 different patents since its inception. This comes as no surprise as there are over 2,000 employees in just the manufacturing and assembly of movements. The company also has several research and development departments looking at efficient manufacturing. In 1926, the watch industry saw an important change, perhaps one of the most important milestones in modern watchmaking. Rolex invented the first waterproof case using a patented screw-down crown, case back, and winding crown. It was called the Rolex Oyster Case. This watch was put to the ultimate test by Mercedes Gleitze, a British professional swimmer and the first woman to swim the English Channel. In 1927, Hans Wilsdorf had her wear the original oyster around her neck when she attempted her swim across the English Channel. While Gleitze didn't make it to France during this attempt, the watch kept accurate time in cold seawater and hours of immersion. To add to the publicity around the swim, Rolex put fish tanks in shop windows with the oyster submerged to demonstrate the waterproof qualities. Just a few years after developing the waterproof oyster, Rolex continued on the streak of innovation and developed the perpetual rotor in 1931. We know this today as an automatic or self-winding movement. In 1931, the perpetual rotor would turn 360 degrees and generate energy to the mainspring. Rolex added this to the Oyster case and now the model is called the Oyster Perpetual. During this time, however, the rotor was quite thick. Rolex adjusted the case back to compensate for the added thickness and this was the start of the Rolex bubble back models. Today, rotors have been thinned out, glide around a track on the movement, and have even been turned into micro-rotors that sit in the movement and allow for ultra-thin watches. Another invention added to the Oyster Perpetual models was the automatic date complication. This was introduced in 1945. This model was the first automatic chronometer to have a date aperture on the dial. The day date was launched in 1956 and was the first watch to display both the day and date. This model went on to be worn by US President, Lyndon B. Johnson, and was dubbed the presidential watch ever since. The model features a distinctive three-piece link bracelet which Rolex calls the presidential bracelet. In 1933, a Rolex flew over Mount Everest during the Houston expedition. Twenty years later, in 1953, Sir Edmund Hillary and Sherpa Tenzing Norgay were the first men to stand on the summit of Mount Everest. While the expedition team had been given prototype watches, it is thought that Hillary had left his at base camp and instead wore a Smith's Deluxe, while Norgay wore his Rolex to the summit. The model worn was an Oyster Perpetual bubble back, which then led to the development of the Explorer released in late 1953. If reaching the top of the world wasn't enough, Rolex also ventured into the deep dark depths of the ocean. The 1950s and 60s saw diving becoming a popular sport and deep sea exploration was possible. In 1960, the Trieste was launched into the deepest point on Earth, a 10,916-meter depression called the Challenger Deep. This would be the fifth and deepest dive. What was attached to the outside of the bathyscaphe? A Rolex Deep Sea Special, previous versions were also affixed to the earlier dives. 
Although the plexiglass exterior window cracked on the bathyscaphe when the pressure reached 1 ton per square centimeter, or 1,000 times surface level pressure, the Deep Sea Special was unharmed. In 1967 the Sea Sweller launched for the public with a waterproof rating to a depth of 4,000 feet. Another notable deep sea exploration for Rolex happened in 2012 when Oscar-winning filmmaker and explorer James Cameron descended into the Challenger Deep. Love of the sea and this watch on my wrist are inextricably linked. It's a true bond. So what drove me, a man who has little attachment to objects of any kind, to desire a uniquely specific timepiece? Well, let me tell you the story. This was the first solo dive into the deep and similarly to the Trieste, the submersible had the Rolex Deep Sea Challenge on an outside robotic arm. Rolex honors this dive with the Deep Sea D-Blue, a blue-to-black gradient dial similar to the change in ocean water as you dive deeper. The Deep Sea D-Blue has a waterproof rating of 12,800 feet. Rolex already had a professional partnership with professional swimmer Gleitza. But this has continued over the years with involvement in golf, sailing, tennis, equestrian tournaments, and in motorsports. While many of these are sponsorships of different events or athletes, one, in particular, stands out as having an influence on Rolex models. In 1935, Sir Malcolm Campbell set the world land speed record, breaking the 300 miles per hour barrier and wearing a Rolex Oyster. Sir Malcolm Campbell shows his famous bluebird prior to an attack on the world record of Daytona next month. I do so hope that we shall be successful. It will be a great tribute to workmanship and design. Listen to her roar. His average speed was over 276 miles an hour. I have sufficient confidence in myself. And if you've got confidence in yourself, the rest can be. In 1962, Rolex became the official timekeeper of the Daytona International Speedway and the Cosmograph reference 6239 was introduced to celebrate. The chronograph was nicknamed the Daytona and La Mans at the start thanks to the partnerships with each race. It wasn't until 1965 that all variants included Daytona printed on the dial alongside Cosmograph. Notably, one of the rarest Daytona models is known as the Paul Newman after the actor took up race car driving in the 1970s. These models are incredibly rare and must be an original reference 6239 with block markers for the subdials and crosshairs rather than the standard plain line marker. In 2017, Paul Newman's actual watch was on auction and sold for $17.75 million, making it one of the most expensive watches sold at auction. You're done. Selling officially at 15 million 500,000. Thank you for your patience, Natalie. It is history now. 15 million 500,000. The brand is tied to the arts in more ways than being worn. Rolex is a founding supporter of the Academy Museum of Motion Pictures. There is even a gallery exploring the relationship between Rolex and cinema, which includes James Bond. Rolex has also been sponsoring the Green Room at the Oscars since 2016. Their partnership doesn't end with Hollywood Rolex sponsor some of the most prestigious musical events all over the world including the Summer Night Concert by the Vienna Philharmonic, the Salzburg Festival, and the Whitsun Festival alongside some of the top musicians and conductors. Rolex has been able to create tool watches for over 100 years, evolving and pushing the boundaries over that time. They used extreme marketing techniques, like the fish tank campaign and strapping watches to a submarine to prove they worked. Today, many people equate a luxury watch with being a Rolex because of its marketing and prominence in the world. Owning a Rolex is a grail for many collectors and there is a model for every use.